Welcome to Zotero, Organizing Sources. Lots of people think of Zotero as a citation generator, but actually its greatest benefit might come in the intermediate steps, where you're organizing your research to see what kinds of things you have. One of the very basic things you can do to organize your library is to set up your columns in a way that makes sense to you, so that you can see what you want to see, and so that you can sort your library in a way that makes sense for your research. In Zotero, you can add or remove columns by clicking on the column icon over here on the right. Perhaps I want the year. Then you can sort based on that column's information. Another important organizing principle is to use folders. Remember that individual records can be added to more than one folder. I also recommend that you think about folders that might be useful in your process, as well as topic folders or course or project folders. For example, a process folder might be a temporary folder where all new items go before they get sorted. Or it might be a to-read folder with all the things that you still have to read. Or it might be a to-interlibrary loan folder, for example. In your Zotero library, you can see what folders an item might be in by clicking on an item and then holding down the Option key. You'll see a yellow highlight on the folder or folders where that item exists. Another important organizing tool that's available to you in Zotero is the use of tags. These are available down in the bottom left. In Zotero, if you want to add a tag to an item, click on the item, then click Tags, and Add. T start typing. And hit Enter. If you want to remove the tag, simply click the minus button. If you have a large library with many tags, You'll be able to click on a tag and see all the items that are associated with that tag. This can help you in your research to see what kinds of things you have available to you on different parts of your paper. If there's a tag you want to be able to see all the time or want to have a color associated with it, these are called shortcut tags. You can right-click on the tag, click Assign Color, and then you can decide, actually, I want this one to be at the very top of my list. Set Color. And now you have a tag and you've ordered them in the way that makes sense to you. Another important research tool available in Zotero is the ability to take notes. These then become searchable. There are two main types of notes available in Zotero. One is called a standalone note. You create a new standalone note and then whatever you say at the top line is the title of that note. I recommend having a standalone note for any tag vocabulary that you end up using so that you can remember how you're defining each thing. I would put an underscore at the beginning so that this note will always float to the top of my list. And I can start defining my tags. In addition to standalone notes, each item in your collection can have its own note. To add a note, simply click on the item and then click Notes. Click Add and you can start typing a new note. You can also edit in a separate window if you want to have this note file floating around while you're doing your reading. When you're done, simply close the window and now look, we have two notes associated with this reading and these notes become searchable in with everything else in Zotero. As you're keeping notes, I highly recommend that you pay attention to two key things. Make sure that you know the difference between direct quotations from your readings and ideas that you have. I do this by keeping quotation marks around any direct quotations in my readings, and I put square brackets around anything that I came up with as I was reading. The second truly important thing to do is to keep track of what page number is associated with the quote or idea that you had. This way you can be sure to be able to produce good citations as you're writing your papers. And as always, if you have questions or want help, you can always contact us. We're here to help!